I'm Susan Langenhenick. I'm the Home and Garden Editor for NOLA.com and the Times Speaking and I'm here with Dr. Robson Lutz today. The Tennessee Williams Literary Festival is coming up next week, March 25th through 29th, here in the French Quarter. And we're exploring some of the places where Tennessee Williams actually lived in the quarter, which was quite a few. Um, and you bought this house from Tennessee Williams. That's that right, Susan. Kenneth Combs and I moved to Dumain Street in 1981, right mm -hmm. next door. We met Tennessee Williams shortly after we moved here. He decided he wanted to stay living here, but he was tired of all the maintenance and the upkeep, sort of like we're getting now. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we uh, signed a purchase agreement with him a couple of months before he died, and then the actual act of sale went through after his death in 1983. And he lived in one of the apartments. How many units are in this building that he owned? Right, there's six units here. He had them all redone in the late 1950s, early 60s when he first bought the building. They all have the same bathtubs, they all have the same uh, green tile that was uh, must have been in vogue in those days. That's all That's all intact. In now, uh, uh, Tennessee lived in several places in this building, but the last uh, six, eight, ten years he lived in apartment B, and that's mm -hmm. the largest apartment in the building. It's got the wonderful uh, balcony that overlooks the main street. Do we know if he wrote anything here or was he finishing his memoir? I think he was finishing his memoirs here. He may have done a little bit of other writing, but uh, his his appearances were always mysterious. You never knew when he was coming. There he was. He he, he would come. You would invite him over, uh, and uh, he came over to a couple of times uh, to, to, to our house, which is how we got to know him. And then uh, he, he would say, well, I'm going to be down here two weeks, and the next day he'd be gone. It was just when the spirits <laughs> called him. He literally traveled when the spirits called him. So there's a famous quote that's actually on the wall here at the um, house that says he wanted to die in his big brass bed here on Dumain Street. Did that actually happen? No, that didn't happen. He died in a, a bed at uh, in a hotel in New York. But uh, Kenneth Holdridge was the one who uh, found that quote for us and suggested that that quote be on the plaque when the uh, literary society that uh, honored the building put it up. Well, so one of the neat features is that this pool, I understand, he put the pool in and it was one of the first in the French Quarter? That's right. Uh, Clay Shaw, I think, put in the first pools in the French Quarter, but this, this, was, this was one of the earliest. Uh, Certainly not the first, but one of the earliest, and of course it has that kidney shape uh, that I guess was popular in, in, in the 60s. And Tennessee put it in because he loved to swim. According to uh, neighbors, uh, even when he would come down in the, in the middle of the winter, he would jump in the pool every day when he was on the outs with the New Orleans Athletic Club and didn't go there. <laughs> but uh, he, uh, Tennessee had this thing for swimming. And so he lived here off and on, he would always travel, but he always came back to Dumain Street. Did he kind of consider Dumain Street his sort of spiritual home as much of his physical home? Well, he certainly wrote something to that effect uh -huh. in, in the books, but he also, he had a house in Key West where he probably spent actually more time than he had a hotel suite in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. uh, he uh, didn't let any grass grow under his feet.